I want to come back to another thing you said. Twice now you've alluded to less technical, more portable, indirect calorimetry devices than what I'm used to in the lab if I'm doing a VO2 max test. Now, I was under the impression, and I'd love to be corrected here, that these portable devices are probably decent for measuring VO2, i.e. the consumption of oxygen, but their accuracy is sorely lacking for measuring VCO2, the production of carbon dioxide. And therefore, it might be a good tool for estimating VO2 max, but it's not a great tool for estimating total energy expenditure, which is calculated by using VO2 and VCO2, and nor is it a great tool for measuring uh, fat oxidation, because there you must be able to look at a very accurate ratio of VCO2 and VO2. So yeah. are there devices out there that we could be buying that, you know, we could be testing ourselves on every month at home that would meet the criteria of being accurate enough in those domains? Yes. So uh, one, I think the accuracy of the devices are starting to become uh, fairly good. We do very often back to back testing between the devices. So of course, in a laboratory setting, we are using mixing chamber system, which is, of course, is, is uh, validated against many different methods. Which system do you use in your lab? So I am actually sticking still to an old system. Uh, I'm which not, one, Parvo? No, no, actually, no, not not a Parvo. I'm actually using an, a Jager Oxycon uh, Pro with a mixing chamber system. Okay. Um, but I also really like the AEI Moxus as well, uh, simply because it has uh, some superior technologies uh, in it uh, compared to most of the other devices on the on the market. Most of the devices on the market, we're not going to go into this, but they're using uh, most of them are using galvanic fuel cells uh, to measure uh, oxygen and then use infrared sensors to measure the uh, the co2 but one of the things that the the for example the ai moxus is doing is that it actually measures it using a zirconia cell instead and zirconia cell is actually one of the most sensitive cells that we have and it's you can't use it for example if you want to look at the photosynthesis for example you can't use a galvanic fuel cell because it's not act or it's not sensitive enough while a zirconia cell is mm. Uh, sensitive enough but nevertheless uh, the same technology now sits in the portable devices so it's, it's still using it, it also the portable devices now uh, are using galvanic fuel cells uh, and uh, we of course i mentioned the view to master one of the benefits we have had is that we enter into a partnership with them to to advance the technology uh, several years back i did a screening on the market of all kinds of different metabolic or portable metabolic devices what I am in need of is that I need to find a compromise. It doesn't help me necessarily to find a device that is a little bit more accurate than, for example, than the VO2 master, for example, if the atlas doesn't want to use it because it has a rucksack and it has a lot of procedures, it is a horrible user interface and all this kind of thing. Then, you, then basically, I bought a super nice device. I'm able to get the atlas to measure it one or twice time, but that's not where the yeah. strength of data comes. The strength of data comes exactly from what you say. You need to measure regularly all the time there, and it has to be done in a way that the atlas does doesn't feel it as intrusive or invasive into their lives. So tell tell me tell me a little bit about the VO2 master because I'm aware of some of the other portable devices but not this one. So obviously the hallmark of this is you're you're going to be plugging the nose, you've got a mask that creates a perfect seal and therefore very clearly at a minimum can measure the air flow rate in and out, correct? Yeah, so so the thing is actually you don't need to plug your nose. It actually uses a Hans Rudolph mask. So the most in most labs you'll very often see at least are using this blue masks yeah. more or less. Okay. So actually, so so the cool thing is that what what they did is that they actually designed a device that sits actually mounts on this uh, Hans Rudolph mask that is around in the labs. And then basically what it does is the same as you do with a metabolic heart that sits in the laboratories. It has the galvanic fuel cells because this is made by maybe there are five manufacturers of galvanic fuel cells in the world. 
And uh, basically everybody purchases from more or less these five different manufacturers. There. So it's the same galvanic fuel cells that sits in the view to master. And then basically the main differences between this device is that they are removed the turbine and they're using the same way of measuring flow that you do in Formula One and aerospace. So they use differential pressure instead to, to quantify the flow of what you're doing. So basically this is a device that just sits here. It's a headgear. There's no wires, there's no nothing. It's basically connects to your phone, watch whatever that you have. And then basically this is how you now collect your oxygen consumption. So I could go out for a bike ride. If I'm going to go and do VO2 max intervals and hill repeats, my favorite workout is the four to five minute hill repeat. I could be wearing this thing and that's it. And I come yeah, home can. and it's going to say, if I did 10 sets, it's going to tell me peak oxygen consumption per each set. You can even connect it to your Garmin computer and you can go into your Garmin account and you can see it there, all the views. So you can see your breathing frequency, tidal volume, you can see your fraction of expired O2, your VO2, all the values basically combined there in the same, together with your power, with your velocity, with your position, everything there, like in one place. You don't need to look at once like a separate report for your VO2 numbers, and then basically looking at your Garmin numbers, basically they are, they are overlaid. You're so there, it's going to show me heart rate versus power versus VO2 at every moment in time. Exactly. And how accurately is it measuring VO2 relative to what you can do in the lab? And how about VCO2? So VCO2 is, of course, some some that's a place where we have been very fortunate because we are a little bit ahead of the curve there. So we have had their device that has CO2 now for this must be soon two years, I think. The VO2 master also does VCO2? Yeah, in the prototype, this is probably going to be released to the market uh, sometimes during next year. Then basically the whole market will have access to it. I see. So okay. we so we also we also have the CO2 uh, CO2 uh, capabilities as well. Um, but yes, basically you can go out. Uh, how it compares with basically a metabolic heart? I think here there are two things to keep in mind. One is of course that measure of VO2 is a measure of VO2. So obviously they should on one side be the same. But one thing also we know that between different devices, so the Oxycon uh, Oxycon uh, Pro, for example, we have the option to basically use it as a breath to breath device, or we can mm. use it as a mixing chamber device if you use as a breath to breath device then basically you're breathing straight through the turbine that's it so there's minimal resistance then of course on the other side we can use the mixing chamber system and then you have a 2.7 meter long hose now and I come, uh, if you want to know i can come back why it's 2.7 meters later on but anyway it's connected to a mixing chamber and then basically what happens here is that the, the, the breathing resistance now goes up a little bit and as yep. we know also breathing is not free either your lungs in order to breathe they also need energy they need atps to contract and ba or basically breathe simple as that and basically, the more resistance there is to the breathing, the higher the oxygen consumption obviously will be. So you will actually see now for the exact same device, the exact same sensor, but just depending on the method they're using, that there will be differences between the two machines there. Simple as that. Further, when you go out and you actually do biking, one thing that is important to keep in mind there is that you are creating a very high headwind most likely when you are going fast. Of course, you can go in a hill or these kind of things and you bring down the velocity a, a, a big or to very low velocities, but you put out big power there. But what we have to remember is that any system that is based on measuring flow, and you now have an interference from basically flow reaching or, or hitting the turbine, hitting the VO2 master or any metabolic device there, will most likely also start to influence a little bit the numbers there. Because we have to remember also that we are not really measuring uh, really measuring the flow, and we are not really measuring the total oxygen consumption, we are inferring it based on methods that are basically saying that when you're basically, we see that the turbine is rotating at this, uh, this many RPMs per minute, for example, then basically we know that that correlates to mm. a certain so there will always be a little bit of uncertainties. And that's why, for example, when you're in a lab setting where basically you have no headwind, you have very controlled conditions and all these kind of things, the ability to get a higher accuracy will always be higher than it is out in the field. But then we know that what you do in the laboratory is still quite far from what you do out in the field because you're already starting to limit the way that you're moving, the cooling. Yes, maybe you have a fan on this, but cooling will be different. There are a lot of things that already are different there. So the question is always, do you want accuracy of what really you are looking at or do you are just looking at 
oxygen consumption and then you create an artificial setting which is not necessarily representable for what you're doing so it is a little bit of a give and take where basically yes you give a little bit in one place you lose a, maybe a little bit of let's say absolute accuracy from the device because you're introducing some more unknown variables there but at the same time you're looking at it now in real life conditions where you want to see okay what is it looking like here and you get that accuracy in there but on a compromise of absolute let's say measurement and how much of a difference are you seeing in one of your athletes between what you're doing gold standard on an ergometer in a lab versus if you put the mask on them and you make them go and do four minute hill repeats where the velocity is not that high but they're probably still going you know 18 to 20 miles an hour up a hill pushing a massive gear to hit that VO2 max. How much of a difference are you seeing in the VO2 and the VCO2? Uh, between the two devices, so between the Yes, metabolic... between the lab and the portable yeah. of the VO2 master. Yeah. So so again, uh, then uh, there typically when we do back-to-back -back testing there between the two devices, we would see normally for Christian and Gustav, uh, let's say difference of maybe 50 milliliters between the two between the two devices that's it yeah yeah this, this that's it, nothing it, it, yeah exactly i but thought you, i thought you were going to say 500 milliliters no <laughs> then we could just throw the device out the window then it has no <laughs> value anymore <laughs> no no that, that 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 wouldn't be acceptable we okay are, we, okay we, okay we, so we are, we, but 50 millimeters 50 milliliters of of oxygen and your your guys are putting out probably you guys have an absolute of probably six liters seven seven liters oh my god so <laughs> yeah yeah so so this is this is not even this is understandably it makes a difference at their level but for someone at my level and for most of the people listening here a 50 milliliter difference is it is nothing it's less than nothing yeah so that so these things are really i'm this is a, this is so exciting to me because I was under the impression that these devices were still so far away that they were not even worth uh, entertaining the use of.